Let me introduce you all to Mr. Johnny. He is Mr. Johnny and he is a hodophil. That is, he loves to travel a lot. Now, recently he has taken a complete tour of our country, India, and he has visited many foreign countries as well. So here we have some of the pictures from his traveler and in these pictures we can see Himalayas, Thar Desert, Deccan region and Goa beaches. Now each of these pictures represent different landforms that are present on the earth's surface. For instance in the first picture we can see tall snow capped mountains. In this picture we can see a highland and in this picture we can see a vast endless desert and coming to the last picture we can see beaches or coastal plains. So each of these pictures represent different landscapes or different landforms that are present on the earth's surface. Now what is meant by a landform? Well, a landform is a physical feature that forms naturally on the earth's surface. So, a landform is a natural feature on the earth's surface. Now, as discussed previously, there are different types of landforms on the earth's surface. Well, the seven major continents that you know about, namely Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, South America, Australia and Antarctica represent the major landforms on the earth's surface. Now within these large continents different landforms are present like mountains, plateaus, plains etc. Thus we find that landforms are of several types. Now that you have understood the meaning of landform, let us see how landforms are formed. Now as mentioned previously, landform is a physical feature that is formed naturally on the earth's surface. So landforms are formed due to natural forces. Now there are some natural forces that act on the earth's surface like sea waves, running water, wind, rainfall etc. So all these natural forces act on the earth's surface and these forces are responsible for forming different landforms. Also there are some natural forces that act inside the earth or beneath the earth's surface. For instance you can see magma erupting in case of a volcano. So a volcano is an example of a force that act inside the earth. So we learned that landforms can be formed by forces acting on the earth's surface and they are also formed by the forces that act inside the earth. And both these forces are collectively responsible for forming different landforms on the earth's surface. We shall first deal with the forces that act on the earth's surface. As mentioned just now, landforms are formed due to some natural forces that act on the earth's surface and these forces can be observed by us. For instance, in this video we can see strong winds blowing over vast stretches of barren lands. Again, rivers tumbling down the rocky surface and we can also see glaciers moving over valleys. Now, all these forces act on the earth's surface and they are known as exogenic or external processes. And these processes are responsible for forming different landforms on the earth's surface. So as mentioned just now, exogenic or external processes act on the earth's surface and they include the processes of erosion and deposition. Now erosion refers to wearing down of land surface by the action of wind, running water etc. Now these eroded sediments are further deposited elsewhere. Thus exogenic processes include the processes of erosion and deposition. Erosion refers to lowering of the land surface whereas deposition causes is upliftment of the land surface and this is how landforms are formed by exogenic processes and it includes the action of wind, running water etc. Now before proceeding with our lesson let us see if we can answer this question. 
which of the following is not an agent of exogenic processes? Is it wind, waves, soil or river? What do you think? Well, let me help you. As discussed previously, exogenic processes include the action of wind, waves, river, glaciers, etc. But soil does not cause any type of action on the earth's surface that leads to formation of landforms. So, soil is not an agent of exogenic processes. So, the correct option will be soil which is not an agent of exogenic processes while rest of them are agents of exogenic processes. Now you must have heard of natural calamities like earthquakes and volcanoes. But do you know what triggers them? Well, the natural calamities like earthquakes and volcanoes are caused due to forces acting inside the earth or beneath the earth's surface. And these forces are known as endogenic or internal processes. Now, unlike exogenic processes, endogenic processes cannot be observed by us as they act inside the earth which is inaccessible by us. So, we cannot observe endogenic processes. Now, let us learn how landforms are formed by these processes. We know that the earth's interior is quite different from its exterior appearance. The earth's core is a giant ball of burning rocks. Even the earth's crust is divided into several lithospheric plates. Now these plates are not static but they float on molten magma. Now due to extreme temperature and pressure these plates move they either converge or drift apart from each other thereby forming cracks on the earth's surface. Now magma tries to escape through these cracks due to huge pressure and this is known as volcanic eruption which is a sudden force. Now the lava coming out of a volcano eventually cools down and form different landforms on the earth's surface. So this is how landforms are formed by endogenic processes. So in this video, we learned that there are two major processes that forms different landforms on the earth's surface and these two processes are exogenic processes and endogenic processes. Exogenic processes as its name suggests are the external processes that act on the earth's surface while endogenic processes are internal processes that act inside the earth's surface. Exogenic processes include the erosional and depositional work of various natural agents like rivers, winds, waves, glaciers, etc. Whereas endogenic processes include sudden movements like volcano, earthquake, landslides, etc. Now, although these two processes are different from each other, but they act collectively to form different landforms on the earth's surface. That is, both these processes are equally responsible for forming different landforms. So, that's all about today's discussion on exogenic and endogenic processes of land formation. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now